Hey, Prime members, you can listen to Killer Psyche ad-free on Amazon Music. Download the app today. Craving a good mystery? Then it's time to escape into a bygone age of danger, glamour, and romance as you immerse yourself into the world of June's Journey, a captivating hidden object detective story set in the 1920s. Play as June Parker in her quest to solve the truth behind her sister's unexplained death and uncovers a scandalous family secret along the way. With hundreds of mind-teasing puzzles, the next clue is always within reach. And you don't have to play alone. You can chat or play with, or against, other players by joining a detective club. Lose yourself in this captivating quest of mystery, murder, and romance. Can you crack the case? Download June's Journey for free today on iOS and Android. A listener note, this episode contains adult content and is not suitable for everyone. Please be advised. This month, Netflix released its true crime documentary, Lover, Stalker, Killer, about a deadly love triangle. It tells the story of how 35-year-old Nebraska auto mechanic Dave Krupa became a part of an internet dating nightmare. In 2012, Dave matched with a woman on an internet dating site named Shanna Elizabeth Golier, or Liz. After months of casually dating Liz and many other women, Krupa met Carrie Farver, and there was an instant spark between them. They began dating. However, just a couple weeks into their relationship, Farver suddenly vanished. But she didn't go away completely. From that point on, both Dave and anyone close to him, especially Liz Golier, started receiving a deluge of very angry and threatening texts and email messages from Farver. And over the next three years, he would receive more than 18,000 intimidating emails and some 50,000 texts from accounts associated with Farber. The harassment affected his job, his children, and his relationship with their mother. Farber's mother always insisted the texts were not from her daughter and that she was missing. But there were no leads in her disappearance until 2015, when two new detectives re-examined the case. They discovered that Liz Gallier, the seemingly innocent victim, was actually the one who did the harassing, that it could not possibly have been Carrie Farver because Liz had murdered her the day she disappeared. Today's headline is courtesy of KMTV News Omaha, Accused of concocting a web of lies and deceit to cover up the disappearance of a woman who dated her ex-boyfriend. Authorities believe Shannon Goliar killed Carrie Farver in 2012. The 41-year-old Goliar is charged with first-degree murder and arson. Prosecutors say in November 2012, Goliar killed 37-year-old Carrie Farver because she started dating a man who broke it off with Goliar, Dave Krupa. She allegedly stabbed Farver in her own vehicle, dumped her body, and used Carrie's phone, Facebook, and fake email accounts for years to make people believe Carrie was still alive and to harass Krupa. She was an obsessive stalker when, in fact, it was Goliar. This was such a convoluted, complicated, extensive scheme. It included the defendant even making police reports claiming she was the victim uh, of crimes Carrie Farber perpetrated on her. Today, Julie and I will discuss the bizarre and fascinating case of Liz Goliar. Candace, this is by far one of the craziest stories that we've ever covered on Killer Psyche. Mm. Yes. And we haven't even covered it yet. We're we're going to be covering Liz Goyer, the murderer of this story, later in our weekly. But right now, this was brought up to us because there is a new Netflix documentary on the case 
Let's talk a little bit about how this got started. The thing about the Netflix special, by the way, the title says it all. Lover, Stalker, Killer. That's the name of the documentary. And you're absolutely right. This woman, Liz Goyer, is in a league of her own. Liz Goyer was not only a digital stalker, she was a physical stalker. And her text and emails were just full of rage and became increasingly threatening. Is there a mental illness or a personality disorder that's associated with stalking behaviors? Stalkers are rarely mentally ill. And when they are, the illness is usually they are suffering a delusion. They believe something that is not true. And they believe it despite overwhelming evidence to the contrary, such as Let's say I'm a delusional person and I'm a stalker and my delusion is that President Biden is my husband and I stalk him. That is coming from a very, very ill mind, that, a psychotic, that is someone out of touch with reality. Most stalkers are not mentally ill, but they do have problems. And boy, did Liz Gawlier, in my opinion, she was spending 40 to 50 hours a week online and texting, pretending to be Carrie Farber. The real Carrie Farber apparently was a very sweet, wonderful person. The Carrie Farber she was pretending to be was a horrible, horrible person that nobody would want to be around. But Dave didn't know that. Dave and Carrie had just been dating two weeks. What's even worse, it wasn't that she was just doing it to her and to Dave. She would text Carrie's son, and she would text Carrie's mother yeah. and just say, sorry, I'm moving to Kansas, or I don't want to talk. Her teenage son. Yeah. She even yeah. sent a message to them saying that Carrie had been spotted at a homeless shelter, which they went to see, and then she wasn't there. It's this horrible thing where she was making them, she was giving them hope oh. that their daughter was alive. Right. And and you know what that is. Six-letter word starts with an S. Yeah. She was sadism, a sadism. An emotional sadist. I mean, when Liz murdered Carrie, her son was only 14. She goes beyond just the regular jealousy murderer. She is a jealousy murderer with a splash of sadism and a whole shaker full of narcissism. I think it's important for people to understand something about Liz other than what we've been talking about, and that is she could be charming. Dave liked her. They hit it off. They were dating for a few weeks casually, and she was very fun to be with by Dave's own words. But there was an entire other side to Liz. You know how I feel about the word evil. It only belongs in Grimm's fairy tales and things like that. But this woman, if ever that word could be hung around someone's neck, it would be her. Well, I feel like she is the definition that you always talk about of a narcissistic psychopath because she was charming, but it was all about her and in service to her. Was she delusional, though? Would you call her delusional to think that she was going to no. be with Dave? No. That was a wish. It was a desire. Delusion is a clinical term in the world of psychiatry, psychology. And what it means is it's a very powerful belief in something that has no basis in fact. And the individual believes it despite overwhelming evidence to the contrary. No, she was not delusional about getting Dave back. She wanted him back. She wished he would come back. She manipulated a situation that he ended up back in her bed eventually. That's not a delusion. I would also like to point out that in addition to being clearly a narcissistic psychopath, Liz definitely had obsessive compulsive features as well. Who else would spend 40 to 50 hours a week writing texts and writing emails and manipulating situations and, and all that she did, you'd have to have. So in addition to throwing off suspicion of herself, 
Did Liz get something more from being portrayed as the victim of the stalker as well? Oh, you bet she did. Just picture this. You ever been to a circus, Julie? A real on-site circus? I have. Okay, so you know, there's a ring. And in the middle of the ring, where all the various acts are performed, is a ring master. And he is, he's got his whistle, he's got his little whip, whatnot, and he is in charge of all this activity going on around him. And obviously has to be very good at it. That's how I see Liz. She was manipulating all these people around her, cops, ex-boyfriends. Liz was even contacting, as you mentioned, Carrie's own mother and son. She was doing all these different things that actually was not necessary at all. Why did she do it? She liked it. She put herself in the center of that ring I'm talking about. And she got the detective's attention by making herself a victim. And it was all about, and here's where the narcissism comes in. Look at me, look at me, look at me. We shouldn't be looking for Carrie. Look at what's happening to me. And it wasn't until her behavior became, as I said, over the top, that she finally went too far. Do you think if this had gone on longer that she would have eventually hurt Dave? Maybe. But he never reported that she was violent with him or threatened him in any way. It appears her big issue was with women, not men. I I suggest everybody, if you're interested, watch the Netflix documentary, and you will see that online dating was a big component of how Dave met people, and now he's not dating at all. I can't blame him after what he's gone through. But I would just say to people, it takes a long time to get to know someone. And somebody can look real good as the expression goes, looks good on paper. Anybody can put anything they want on a dating site. And in the couple of weeks that Dave was dating Liz before he met Carrie, he did not notice any of this. Buyer beware. <laughs> 